First off, Jed, thank you for your time. Thank you for, you know, for taking a bit of your time for this interview. I know you're really busy. Congratulations on hitting your one of on your mark for on the Kickstarter on the on the for the project from for Ghost. Um, thank you. I'm, I'm a huge fan of, of horror movies. I'm a huge fan of everything that has to do with me, you know, getting involved in the story and just um I mean getting those scared. I typically don't scared, get scared anymore, but you know, I, I'm pretty sure that this thing is gonna scare the RPGs out of me. So I absolutely, yeah. absolutely love where you're going with the game goes. And again, thank you for your time. Uh, I, I, I have a lot to talk. I don't know how much time you got, but thank you. As long uh, as you want, Rafi, as long as you want. Thank you, I'm for, here. Being, thank you for being here. <laughs> um, first off, uh, obviously, uh, I know the first situation. I mean, obviously, I read the first situation that we got because of the pandemic, not being able to be outside. We miss, I miss personally, you know, Hollywood Horror Nights, being out there in the, in the, you know, those haunted houses that we mm. basically do when we go to, um, you know, when we, when, when there's Halloween time, obviously. So uh, that, was that, the, you know, was that the genesis of the game? That, was, was that the reason that you wanted to, you know, create this game? The, the kind of genesis is like in, in lockdown, I started playing all of those old full motion video games like Night Trap, Phantasmagoria, uh, Seventh Guest, things like that. Um, and just because I was just, I just wondered to how they kind of stood up in, in, in the 21st century. And I mean, some of them were good, some of them were terrible, but I enjoyed it. That's the main thing. It was fun. And then because Host, Host was doing so well, this was about Halloween last year. Host was doing so well. It was in all the cinemas and um, we were going around doing Q&As, the cast and the crew. And then I just looked at my friends and, and just thought, like it would be great to do one of those full motion video games with you guys um and then and then yeah just i had that that idea that the seed of an idea was in my head from about halloween or just before halloween and and yeah and i just decided to make it usually when i get an idea in my head like it, I, I won't stop until it's done inception it gets stuck right there and it yeah. doesn't come out I'm glad you made some host. I love host, just by the way. I, oh, thank you. This, this is not about host, but I gotta say that that I did love host. And okay. obviously, all the crew of hosts is back on this project. How did they react to to? Yeah, all the girls are here. How did they react to? You know, what, what, how you, when you when you told them, hey, I'm doing this. What do you guys think? Do you want to do your project up? Do you need part of it? What did the guys girls say? Well, how, how did they react? Did they react to it? <laughs> just every time I ask them to do something they're just like oh here we go again <laughs> like <laughs> like but they're, they're, they're just so used to like crazy ideas this is I've worked with I've worked with some of them like five or six or seven five or six times at least and in this combination with the five girls mm -hmm. this will this will be the third time I think um and and yeah and like they, they just trust me I trust them and I always think like if you if you can work with your friends you should because it just makes things so much easier when you have a group of people that understand what you want to do they understand your references um and they just trust you to do something good and, and deliver so i'm excited i'm just excited to be working with them again and i speak to them every day to be honest but like i'm excited to see for the world to see us all working together again before we jump into the gameplay or, the, or, or how the gameplay is going to run, I want to talk about something that you did, which I absolutely loved. And when not, I retweeted it on Twitter. I don't care. I don't even remember how many times I retweeted it because I just <laughs> love, you know, horror movies. So mm -hmm. the main antagonist obviously is that long, tall lady, right? Yeah. And then I just think it was so smart. I don't see it. I mean, on Twitter, I don't see it. Do you see it? Did you guys see it? I think that was so smart because obviously marketing from the marketing side, everyone's like, okay, let me see if I can find it. When you finally find it, you was like, ah, oh, wait, that there yeah. it is. So, <laughs> okay, so two things with this. Um, how did that came about? But more importantly, uh, how you know, how did how did you decide that this the long term lady is gonna be the 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 main antagonist of the story? Well, like there, there is no marketing to this game. I'm just the marketing. We, we don't have a marketing budget. It's just, it's just me doing everything, which is good because it means that I can decide like how we drip feed the information from this game. And I, I, I was just always excited by what they did with the Blair Witch projects, how they built up the urban legend of the Blair Witch before the film came out mm -hmm. and, and around the film. And that's always, that's always stuck with me. Um, 
And I kind of wish we did that with host a little bit as well, but we just had no idea it would be so big so quickly. So we couldn't do all of that. So with this, I just thought, okay, I'm going to create an urban legend. I'm going to make people think this urban legend is real. It'll feel real. And up until the release of the game ne early next year, I'm going to keep, I'm going to do lots of stuff. There's lots of stuff coming, but with the long lady, um, I had to essentially think of the scariest thing I could think of. What would be the scariest thing you could see at night if you looked at your window? What's the scariest thing you could see? And it would be someone who is tall enough to reach a second floor window and like look inside. That that would be scary. Um, and yeah, and then I went to the to the guy that created Siren Head, Trevor Henderson, mm -hmm. um, and I said, "Hey, Trevor, here." Let me tell you about the long lady. Here's her whole story. Like I want her to look a little like this, and he just create he, he he illustrated her perfectly. And then I went to Jim Henson's Creature Shop, um, who obviously did Labyrinth and Dark Crystal, and I said, "Hey, like you guys may not be into this. Like this is something really weird. It's a game. It's horror." Um, but they 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 understood straight away like how interesting and unique this is. So uh, yeah, so they were f they're fully on board and it's it's great. I, I just wanted to make an antagonist that was incredibly scary, that will live outside of the game as well. Like so, people will talk about her like she's real, and that's why I'm releasing these photos. And there's more to come as well. And yeah, she's sure. terrifying. I like it. I like I like that one. I like I like I like that exclusive. We have got more more photos coming. More more stuff to retweet. More stuff to yes. To find. Um, <laughs> exactly. There 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 are two sides to the game, and and I absolutely love that you're doing this. There's there's the live action what there's there's the real time side of the game, which starts at the, at 10 p.m. Which I'm stoked. I cannot wait to, to That's play good. that. And I'm just gonna go nuts, <laughs> obviously. And there's really the, the 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 game itself, which is part of the other part of the game. Mm -hmm. Um. Explain a little bit how is that going to work? I mean, we understand that once the the the, the clock in my, in my our time sits at 10, 10 p.m., it's another thing that's going to go on in the game. But explain first, basically, how the rest of the game is going to work. Be, 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 uh, I mean, outside of those times. Yeah. Um, so the so the conceit of the game is that you're a, you're a producer of a of a TV show on a failing cable channel. And this show is called Ghosts, and it is the it is the only show that people watch in this entire channel. Like the other shows are terrible. This is their one show that's that's any good. So they want to make a big deal of it. They want to make it live. So um, how you play it is you're the producer in an outside broadcast van, like a van with like the logo on the side, and you're there, and you have all of the screens in front of you, and that's kind of how you play it. You basically you choose what gets sent to the live to the live feed you've got some other stuff to do as well you can go outside the van you can talk to people uh, people can come to you but you have to look after these ladies and you have to uh, make sure that they don't die because spooky things are happening in the house and then you have to keep an eye on, on the long lady um and it, it's a mystery it's uh it's dramatic and it's just really really scary and and I can't give away too much because I don't. I want it to be surprised when you play it. But you said if you just think of Night Trap, but not but Night Trap, that's more interactive and um, scary. <laughs> <laughs> um, that that's the kind of vibe. But um, the ten o'clock thing is because I I want you to feel like this is a live show that you really are, are the producer of a live show that hits at ten p.m. When ten p.m. comes those opening credits of the TV show start and you hear the theme music, you're, you're in the show. You have, to, you have to make sure everything's working. You choose what happens. Um, and I, the reason why I, I wanted it to be 10 p.m. because obviously it matches the in-game time of 10 p.m. when the show starts. But I wanted it to be like an event. Like, you know, when you used to watch like Lost on TV, I was a big fan of Lost. And me too, me too. Yeah, exactly. And you would spend all week thinking of theories, and you go on the internet just looking for clues and mm -hmm. you say, what, hey, what's, what, what do the numbers mean? Why is there a bear? Like what, what's happening? Like, is, is it time travel? And those theories would, 
would just make it so interesting that the in-between times between between episodes made it so interesting so i wanted a game where you it's live you you play it and then in the in-between times between that day and the next day at 10 p.m you have a chance to write to speak to people and go hey okay right, i saw this i saw what did you see and they will see they would have seen other things because they there's so many different things you could do and then you can maybe compare notes and go okay tomorrow we're going to do this we, we're going to we're going to see this. We're going to see this. We're going to we're going to try and save them, and it it will become it will become an event every every single day. It's an event for people to try and crack what's going on, um, and I mean, if you're lucky, you'll get you you never know. You might get through to the end on your first go, but I very very doubt it. Uh, look, I doubt it very much. Um, but if you do, like you'll be rewarded, and the the, the game is the game. I want to basically uh, make the thread between reality and mm -hmm. fiction to be very, very thin. It, um, so real life and the game is very, very kind of like close. I got a couple of questions before we, we sure. finish the interview. Um, obviously the, the game is gonna come out on PS4 and, and Nintendo Switch, which I think is gonna, obviously they're, to me, that the most two important consoles. Not yeah. give me any idea why it works, but I don't people who hate me for it. Um, but um, I'm VR is something, and I'm, I'm obviously I'm looking down the line. I want this mm -hmm. project to be funded. I want this project to succeed. But VR has become something huge, and I, I, I to be completely honest, that's something that I realized this year that I wasn't taking, you know giving too much attention to VR and, and this year I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm wrong. I need to make more attention to VR. VR has become something. And this game to me has, you know, has all the pieces to become, you know, a game that should be played on a VR, whether it's PlayStation VR, whether it's Oculus, whether it's my, my favorite. Do we have that down the line? Do you, do you, do you see yourself like porting that game to VR, would would there be a different experience with VR because of you know what you can do? Um, yeah, I mean, if if I had the chance to 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 do it all in VR, uh, yeah, I hundred percent would. Um, what's more likely to happen is the the game will come out, and if people like it, like I think they will, then there could be other opportunities to have that game in, in, in VR. Um, I don't know what the method is of, of porting to VR. I think you'd, mm -hmm. we'd probably have to film the entire thing again, um, mm -hmm. I'm guessing, just so we, we have VR, but I'm, I'm willing to do that. I wanna do that. I just want, the reason why I'm jumping from film to game is because I wanna tell stories that reach the most people and gaming so much bigger than film. So I wanna, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Gamer, so I, gaming is being in their films. That's, that's yeah, is. exactly. So I, I want the stories I tell to be seen by as many people as possible. So if VR is another way to tell a story, I, I will definitely do that. And and also like the this isn't going to be my first this is going to be my first and only game. I have plans for lots of games um, and I've actually already signed up for the next game after Ghost, but it's it's not been announced yet. But it will be announced. It will be announced soon, and people cool. are gonna. It's gonna blow people's minds. Cool. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. Um, what? What? I think two more questions. What would? What? What is the? What would? What? What's the hardest thing to just to bring from host to ghost? What? What do you consider was your toughest challenge? Coming, you know, mixing the top the two of them together. I think it's. I think the the toughest challenge is convincing people. That I know what I'm doing, really, <laughs> because obviously I've never Ooh. made a game before. <laughs> yeah, and but it's it's the same with host. Like when when we announced host, people genuinely said, oh, "This is going to be the worst film of all time." Uh, in the comments, "This is going to be terrible." Who wants to watch a Zoom movie? And I was just like, "Okay, maybe just wait till it comes out and you'll see." So, I think when when this game was first first announced, like day one or day two, there was a little bit of that. Like I noticed on Twitter, like why is why is Jed making a game? Now <laughs> that stops. Now everyone's like, oh my god, this is incredible. And now we're like ninety five percent funded or something. Like mm -hmm. we got like a week to go, and we we're almost there. Now people are like, oh yeah, no, no, I support it. It was it's it, like we knew it was going to be great. We we knew it was uh, it was going to be funded. Um, so so I love that. I I love kind of people setting expectations and then and then when they actually watch it or play it then hopefully we'll we'll go above their 
their kind of expectations. Um, so yeah, that's the hardest thing really because I've never made a game before. But on the next the next game I do, people will be like, will just be like, oh okay, Jed's Jed made a game now, so like it's it's Jed, fine. Jed's already proved himself, so we we, yeah. we know he has worked. Um, exactly. I, obviously, I haven't played it. I'm I'm psyched to play it. I want to play it once it comes out. Obviously, I, I'm going to review it on the show on the, on the website. Oh, cool. Thank you. Obviously, uh, I one one final question before we let you go, and then obviously people. Uh, can go to the kickstarter.com and 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 back your project which is almost fun that you just said so um, again congratulations on that i mean you blew out like that it's a lot of money so yeah thank you everyone I, yeah. I guess, in my personal opinion i was expected to blow out to, to mean when i first saw it on twitter this is gonna blow out it means it's gonna blow up because people love this type of stuff so and again i i think you just mentioned it you, i think that uh, i compare it to the bread of which project it means something small that blew up and, and and i think that's the right path to go so i again i mean my, my hats off to you how did the relationship with limited run came about because that that's huge and it, and it plays big, yeah. an important role in making sure this works because a lot of people want i want my physical copy obviously mm -hmm. but we all want that physical copy of, of 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 something like this which is limited which is different which is unique and um, which is going to go to me my book it, it may it, it can easily go down the line as a cult classic so how did that you know came, came about how did limited run came about so Obviously, I was a, a massive fan of Limited Run. I, I collect every single Switch game. Like as soon, as soon as the Switch came out, I bought the Switch and I bought every single game. I had a spreadsheet and I was buying all the English games, all the American games, all, all of the Japanese games. It's so expensive. And I genuinely had, up until about a year ago, I had every single uh, <laughs> Nintendo Switch game. And so obviously I became a massive fan of Limited Run. They were re-releasing games. They were releasing amazing collector's editions. So when... So I do what I normally do. Like when I have a have an interesting idea, I go to the best person. That, that's how I got Trevor. That's how I got Jim Henson's Creature Shop. I go to the to the best people and I go, hey, you don't know me. You don't know me at all. <laughs> but, but here's my idea. And I just spoke to to Doug, who who runs Limited Games, who, who owns Limited Run Games. And as soon as he heard the idea, he was just like, I'm in. I'm in. Um, he just he just realized it was something new and like they've they've been releasing they've released hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of games but nothing like this this is completely different a brand brand new game that i think just just because of the people involved with it and also the time element of it i think it's going to be like a real interesting one that people will talk about for a lot for a long time um and like my hero is hideo kojima as well so I know he he took big swings. He took chances. He, he had a he had a game on the on the Game Boy Advance called Boktai, The Sun Is in Your Hand, which had a solar panel on the on the Game Boy cartridge, mm -hmm. and you have to put it in sunlight to pat to 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 help help you. And I always remembered that, and I thought oh, the guy's a genius. I want to do something that involves the real world and the game world and mix them. And that's where the time thing comes in. And I think limited run games haven't had a game like that before, so. So yeah, so it, and it's my first game as well. I want to I want to I wanna show the world. Look, this is the kind of stuff I want to do in the future. I'm going to do things a bit different. I don't have the rule book. I don't know what the rule book is. I'm never going to read the, the rule book. I'm just, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna make the games I want to make and just make it as scary or as fun as possible. Um, one final question as you go. This is fun and, and this is for fun, honestly. The jumpsuits. How? Why? Why did? What sparked the conversation that you had to add jumpsuits to the Kickstarter? Because to me, that blew again. It blew up, and then hey, we like the blue jumpsuits. Can we add the jumpsuits to the Kickstarter? That, did that help a lot with the sales? Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Because it's 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 a higher tier, right? Um, and I think. We'll, we'll release the jumpsuits as like separate things outside of the Kickstarter as well for people to buy. Um, but I love, I love it when everyone's looking kind of like the same in, in things and you'll see in everything we've done so far, it is, it's red and black and white, the, the color palette, mm -hmm. the, the artwork for the game, what they're wearing, red, black and white. And that's for me personally, Everything you see me do from now on is going to be that. It's going to be that themed, and um, there's multiple reasons why they're wearing jumpsuits. But again, like I don't want to spoil it. But um, it there is 
good reasons why in the game they're wearing jumpsuits. And also, I wanted people to have a cheap Halloween costume. Uh, so I want so if they want to dress up like Haley, if they want to dress up, see, they've each got their own thing. Haley's got a cap. Uh, Redina cosplay, has red gloves. That we're gonna see the cos- we're gonna see cosplays everywhere. That's, yeah, that's, it's that's it's very premeditated. What 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 they're wearing. Um, and I wanted them to be feel like a gang, like a group. Like I'm a big fan of the film Warriors, the Warriors, uh, where you have different tribes, like in New York. And I kind of wanted them just to be like a girl gang, ghost girl gang. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's just visually like really cool as well, and um, and it also separates it from hosts as well, where mm-hmm. they're just like here they're united. Again, Jed, thank you for your time. I mean, you and I, Rafi. you just become best friends. He, he's wearing a, a <laughs> BS and Butthead shirt. I got my BS and Butthead uh, skateboard right here. We all grew up in BS and Butthead. We all love Lost, whatever. We're just two fanboys in here talking yeah. about video games that we love, about horror, story, horror stories that we love. Where is the website that people can go? I'm going to link it obviously on the, on the, on the description where where is the website that people can go and, 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 and just, just basically the, we're, we're almost in the end. So. We're almost to the end. Uh, yeah. yeah, just go to Kickstarter, type in ghosts, and uh, you can you can you can find it there. Always go to my socials at Jed Shepherd, J E D S H E P H E R D. You, you'll see all the stuff there. And join um, the Discord. Join the Discord. I'll, I'll join the, the Discord. I'll link, yeah. yeah I'll, I'll link everything on the on the description again. Jed, thank you for your time. Thank, thank you, you Rafi. This was really fun, and I wish you obviously the most of success. I want. I want this to be a success because I, I just, I'm going to go nuts when I see it. And, and then uh, yeah. so again, Jeff, thank you for your time. <laughs> Cheers, Rafi. Thanks very much, mate.